My name is Liz Lynch, and I'm a parent at Oaklawn Elementary. I have a first grader there. Um, I also have a child in 4K and a baby. Um, I'm originally from Oshkosh. I went to all public schools here in Oshkosh on the north side. And really the reason that I started to get involved a lot with Oaklawn is because when I walked through Oaklawn for kindergarten roundup, I was shocked. I honestly don't believe that people in Oshkosh understand the shape that Oaklawn is in and the education that our kids are getting there because of the building. The teachers are wonderful, but because of the building, there are things going on that I'm going to talk about shortly. So these are things that are happening today at Oak Lawn. Our children have less resources than other kids in the district. This is because our library consists of three rows of books. There is not a table, not a chair, no reading space for them to sit down in. When we get new books into our library, we have to take out the old books and give them away because they can't fit the books in our library. There, um, our library is actually only one third the recommended space for a school our size. That's a picture of our library. Notice, like I said, no table, no chairs, nowhere for the kids to sit and look at a book. This is our music room. It looks like an art room because it's also our art room, which would maybe not necessarily be a problem. However, there's no storage. So I've been in other schools in the district, and I've seen how other schools have a few keyboards for kids to use, maybe a few bongo drums so that the kids can get their hands on them. We don't. We have one keyboard that the music teacher can use while our kids watch her use it. They're not getting the same education that other kids are. They don't have an equal learning environment, and they're forced to learn in cramped spaces with minimal storage. This is a picture of our siding that was around the art storage area. Um, there were multiple holes. This was one of them. It was covered up with vinyl siding this um, fall because the water was coming in so much to that area that it was damaging some of our art supplies. So that's now been covered up. However, there's still a large section of the school that has the same old siding um, that does have other holes in it. Right now at Oak Lawn, our children work with specialists in repurposed closets. Places where we used to be able to store things in the school now need to be used for those special services that our students need. Um, this area actually is used for our English language learners. And in order for them to get to that area, they have to walk through the gym, doesn't sound bad, but then through the teacher's lounge, and then they can get to, their, to the area where they're able to work. Um, this is our gym and our storage area and our cafeteria. Our children don't get the recommended gym time that other kids get because our teachers are not able to use the space as a gym like they would um, like to. I'm sure that a lot of you have seen in the news this past November when our kids were displaced from Oak Lawn because of the raining that came through into one of our classrooms. But what you may not realize is that is nowhere near the first time it has rained in Oak Lawn. We have teachers we have been working with that have told us that they were working in that section in 1970 and there were drops coming in. This actually is a year ago, January. We don't have the date wrong. This is January 2011 um, in Mrs. Blake's room. It rained so hard that there were, was an inch of water in that bucket that you saw. There was also water in the lights. Um, this is Mrs. Coleman's room in March of 2011. Um, and there was raining in that room too with 12 buckets and water into the electric lights. They turned off the lights and kept teaching. Those classrooms didn't have the children removed. This is the classroom, um, Mrs. Neagle's room, where after it snowed in November and the snow melted, it came through the roof and leaked enough that the entire side of the classroom had to be closed down. For a couple of days, our 43 kids, it's a multi-age room, so for a couple of days, our 43 kids sat in one classroom and learned. But then the carpenters noticed some bowing in the ceiling. The ceiling was actually bowed. You could see it. And um, they decided it would be better to take the kids out and make sure that, that the building was structurally secure. Thankfully, the structure is sound, and our kids were able to go back to that classroom. However, it will rain again. We, they continue to patch it each time it rains so that it won't rain the next day but that's not gonna stop it forever. This is a sign less than a half a mile away from the north end of our school district boundary. This sign is showing that 
a house with an Oshkosh address has Nina schools. People are choosing not to look at that house because it has an Oshkosh address. <clears throat> it is better for this realtor to promote that that house has Nina schools than that it has, than it's near Oshkosh schools. Right now, the realtors in the area have told us it is difficult to sell a home in the Oak Lawn attendance area. That when a person drives past, when they drive a person past Oak Lawn Elementary, many times that person will say to them, never mind, I'm going to Nina. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this evening. My name is Stephanie Carlin. I have three children in the district and they do not attend Oak Lawn Elementary. I live on the south side of town and I am here tonight because I think that this is an Oshkosh problem, not just a problem for the Oak Lawn students. I fear that eventually there will be a sign in my neighborhood on the south that says Fond du Lac, Fond du Lac schools and people are going to start moving to Fond du Lac in my area. I think this is an issue that affects all of us and I find it deeply disturbing that realtors are carrying that sign in the back of their car ready to put on sale signs because it's a selling point that they're not in our school district. We need to change that. This is an actual picture of Oak Lawn Elementary School. Uh, when we put this up here, we joke that it's an ice fishing shed and then somebody will say, no, we've seen ice fishing sheds that are nicer than that. And we laugh and everything, but it's not a joke. This is our reality. This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing for our town. Maybe you don't have kids here, but I can guarantee that you know somebody that has a child at this school. Maybe your neighbor has grandkids at this school. Maybe the lady that bags your groceries at the checkout counter has kids that go to this school. This is a very small town, and chances are you know somebody that goes to this school. If you are 60 years old, you weren't even born when this school was built. If you're 40 years old, They've been talking about rebuilding or fixing the school your entire lifetime. That's how long this problem goes back. There are 260 children that go here because they have no choice. There's no other place for them to go. This slide talks about what is the benefit for Oshkosh? What's in it for me? What's in it for you? We believe this is an opportunity to revitalize our community. It allows for growth on the north side, similar to what we've seen in the Traeger area. It's consistent with efforts to improve the downtown, the riverfront, and the UWO campus. In the past 10 years, I've seen a revitalized downtown, and we've seen the campus put up a number of new buildings. We've seen the Leech Amphitheater be built and beautiful condominiums downtown. It's time to take care of our schools now. And that relates to the next bullet point, that it will build pride in our educational system and facilities. Now people move to Amro and Winnicani instead of Oshkosh. We want them to move here. If they move here, it will help increase our tax base. More people mean more customers, more consumers of our products, more patrons for your, our restaurants. Um, it also prevents increased busing and district-wide overcrowding. Plan B is not a political maneuver, it's a reality. There are 260 kids at this school that need to go somewhere. We don't have room in any other schools to put these kids. And as a result, each school is going to need to shift south. I don't like it, but it's the right thing to do. It's what we have to do. We have nowhere else to put these kids. And when we move them into schools and, and shove these schools so full that we're working in closets and out of every other school, our school district is going to be even less desirable. A new school will also maintain neighborhoods and allow siblings to attend the same school. If you, have, if you move to this community right now and you have a fourth grader, a second grader, and a kindergartner, for example, you're really tired. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, if, if you have that situation, right now they don't have room for your kids. They can send your fourth grader to one school, they can send your second grader to another school, and your kindergartner to another school. Or you can be bused for 45 minutes to a school that can accommodate your whole family. So right now we're separating families. And if we don't pass this referendum, the neighborhood school idea and the concept will completely go away because the people that live near Smith 
are going to have to shift down to Lakeside. And it's, it's really going to affect every single neighborhood. The last benefit to a new school is that it provides a gymnasium and a cafeteria for community use. Uh, you, we could use the new Oak Lawn for fundraisers, um, uh, community activities and such, and we currently don't have anything like that in the north side, so that would be an additional benefit. We believe that this is an affordable plan. It costs 33 cents a month. I found 35 cents in my dryer yesterday, and my first thought was, I have the money for Oak Lawn this month. What can you get for 33 cents? You can get a Tootsie Roll, you can get a postcard stamp, but not a real stamp because that's 44 cents. Or you can get a new school. It's $44 over 10 years. We can afford that, Oshkosh. Building a new Oak Lawn also prevents a plan B, which will cost about a half a million dollars immediately. People think closing that school will eliminate positions and principals and teachers, but in reality, we'll, we will need these teachers and staff at other schools that will be packed to the gills. There's also an unknown cost associated with the loss of students. We know from surveying the Oak Lawn community that there are about 80 students that may leave the area, Oshkosh Area School District. We know when we closed Green Meadow, we lost 66 students to the parochial schools. Now, what's that amount to? Per six, each child is $6,000 times five-year period, kindergarten through fifth grade. That equates to about $2 million that our district could have. And we are losing students every year when we are not rebuilding our schools and taking care of our facilities. And the last point is that <clears throat> a loss of neighborhood schools really does decrease our property values. Um, realtors tell us all the time that driving by the, the school is a deal breaker. If somebody is interested in a house in the Oakland area and they drive by the school, it's a deal breaker even if they don't have kids because they know that the chances are they'll have to sell that house eventually and nobody's going to want it if there's not a good school in that area. And as I said, I've even... I'm even concerned about the south side. Am I going to start seeing Fond du Lac School District signs on the houses that are for sale in my area? We might if this doesn't pass. How can you help Oak Lawn? Talk to your friends, your families, your relatives, your neighbors, anyone that will listen. Hand out brochures, take a yard sign. You can donate money to our campaign, these buttons and signs. Um, we receive no funding for this effort. It's all public or privately funded. Uh, you can join our Facebook page at Oshkosh for Oak Lawn. We update it every day. You can attend referendum meetings Thursdays at 6 p.m. at the First United Methodist Church on 700 West Linwood. And in conclusion, I just want to leave you with a thought that I stole from my nine-year-old. There's a YouTube video that Liz made uh, that shows the, the rain falling into the classrooms at Oak Lawn. And my nine-year-old is pretty sensitive, and he looked at me, and I thought he maybe was going to cry. And he said, Mommy, why wouldn't anyone vote for this new school? Why wouldn't people want this? And I didn't know how to answer him, because do we need it? Yes, we need it. Is it expensive? No, it's not. This is a case where the right thing is the easy thing to do. Please vote yes on April 3rd.